Day 19, Window Comparator Logic Probe. This is a quick and simple uh, logic probe that I just threw together. It's uh, unlike many of the logic probes you see out there, particularly the, uh, there's a fairly common two transistor one or a one transistor uh, or even no transistors and a lead and one resistor kind of logic probe. Well, actually, that one will tell you if it's high Z, but it's quite low impedance and loads your circuit down quite a bit. This, however, is very high impedance and it knows if the input is um, is floating to Z, you know, not not driven either way. So it's quite a simple circuit. It's uh, it's kind of a comparator built out of transistors, but a very primitive one. Um, these resistors here set the the logic transition point. Um, well, I've got it set to mid rail, and uh, this whole thing's running for three volt power supply, probably because I was designing it for a lithium cell so that it could run with uh, very low quiescent current and just basically sit there and do nothing and then just have a pin out the front and a lead. I haven't actually physically built it at the moment. It's still on the uh, solderless breadboard here. But when I build it, I'll probably build it on a little strip of circuit board and use a uh, lithium cell to power it. Anyway, how it actually works, you've got uh, transistors for each of the, the states. This one for the high state, this one for the low state. The uh, base emitter drop is... their emitters are fixed at this threshold voltage around mid rail and their gates are you know pulled towards this voltage with this high value highish value resistor here there's also some protection diodes but they don't uh, they're only there for when the inputs above or below the ground so this whole, whole thing's obviously relative to ground you have to ground the uh, the circuit to make any you know, it's not a one input probe like all logic probes it has to have a, a ground reference so when the when the voltage exceeds this uh, base emitter drop and this transistor starts to turn on, turns on this PMP and turns on the red lead. Um, similarly for the other half of the circuit, when the voltage drops below this base emitter drop, turns on the PMP, turns on this MPN, turns on the green um, lead. Very very simple. The uh, the there's a dead band of about uh, well it's it's a bit less than. 1.2 volts. Yeah, I actually measured it, but I forgot to write it down for the video. Sorry about that. I'll put it in the details later. But there's a there's a dead band, um, and it's the threshold's actually transitioning fairly quickly because of the gain of the transistors. I've written 12k here, but I ended. I actually used 18k in the circuit because I have a lot of 18k resistors. It doesn't particularly matter. Any value will do. 10k, 20k, you know, anything around there. This 100k resistor can actually be absent, but then the input floats and will pick up noise because it's a, a very high impedance input. In fact, I can show you that by pulling the resistor. Uh, it's probably not going to pick up the hum on my body now, but if I pulled the... Actually, actually used a 470k resistor there, you can see it's picking up hum, particularly when I touch it. Alrighty, let me put that back in. So this, this is just that... the probe resistor essentially, which is there to stop the... Uh, voltages blowing up the front end if they uh, actually activate the the two diodes. I was using larger uh, these power diodes at one point but their input capacitance is a bit higher. The, the signal diodes, the uh, 1N4148s are fine for protecting it because the uh, this resistor will limit any currents unless you've got some ridiculously large voltage input in which case it's cheap. If you blow it up, replace it. Alright, so that's high, that's low, Green lead there. The dead band, um, I had a pot plugged into it and I was just uh, twiddling it up and down. There's a dead band in the middle. As you can see now where it's floating, neither lead is on. Quiescent current's about 11 microamps and it's about 1 milliamp because the way I've set up the, um, well, maybe a little bit less than that actually when the leads are lit. So even, you know, even with tiny batteries it'll probably last pretty much forever. With a lithium cell, I think I'll probably be replacing it every year or something. Alrighty, um, this is a very, very quick one, very, very simple one, very, very useful. It's also obviously a um, useful as a continuity tester as well, because if these are shorted, the green light will come on. One thing I was thinking about doing with it, but I haven't had a chance to try out yet, is to use these, um, these thresholded signals to actually drive a, a piezo so the thing squeaks um, you know high for red and a high frequency for red and a low frequency for green. I was playing around with the circuit but I didn't really uh, 
wasn't to my satisfaction, let's put it that way. It's not a particularly difficult thing to do, but because you've got these uh, complementary outputs, you have to invert one of them with an extra transistor or something. I was trying to avoid that with some uh, bizarre kind of bidirectional uh, current, either you know, sunk or sourced kind of oscillator, but uh, haven't got very far with that yet. In reality, I should probably just afford, you know, a transistor costs nothing, and just use a transistor and invert one of these outputs, uh, or tap maybe here and here, for example. The only problem is that these are running at very low current. That could actually be an advantage, though, because the um, you could use, you could steal a bit of current from here and, and a large amount of current from here and run them into similar value resistors into the, you know, the complementary pair oscillator that we've been using in other projects so that you sort of, for free, get the two different current levels to charge the capacitor at different rates. Anyway, that uh, if I get that working, I'll post an extra or I'll write it up on the website when I eventually write up all the other projects. It's going to be a, a busy new year when I sit down and finally write these up. Alrighty, not many sleeps left. Uh, we'll see what else we come up with. I've got quite a few RF project ideas, but I didn't want to deluge everyone with RF projects because I know I'm, you know, I'm a ham radio operator and I rather like building receivers. I, uh, I had a shortwave receiver. I've actually got a sort of a, a dodgy but quite sensitive uh, super hat. There's uh, quite a few different super regens I could build. There's a, a simple super hat that I wanted to build. Um, kind of ties in with some other stuff that we've been talking about on uh, on Twitter with some other people. So, lots of ideas. A um, couple of musical instruments as well. Uh, although I'm not a musician and I'm you know, a <laughs> hopeless musician, I, I do enjoy building noise-making circuits. As you can see, a lot of the circuits in this uh, have been noise-makers, but I particularly like noise-makers for eyes-up operation, which is one of the reasons why I want to add sound to this particular um, probe, because it's the, the LEDs are fine, it's... Uh, my commercial logic probe that I have here in the lab somewhere, it's probably in the toolbox, it uh, it produces a beep and it's also got a, uh, a pulse mode where it produces a tone but only if there's an AC input. It'd be interesting to replicate that in simple transistors, um, something quite small and, and simple, uh, certainly a lot cheaper than the logic probe, it was quite expensive when I bought it and mainly I just want it for knocking around at work. Um, quite often, most of my job is software but uh, it's useful to know, you know if various levels are actually being driven the way they're meant to be driven when I'm playing with GPIOs or just generally tracing down a circuit. If I don't want to dig out the uh, multimeter and potentially slip and fry things or um, you know, have to actually look at it, it's quite useful to have a noise maker that uh, has a tone proportional to voltage or something. I mean, a tone proportional to voltage is actually quite simple. You could just use one of those uh, oscillators and a resistor and just get an ear for the tone, but anyway, lots of ideas, we'll see what uh, actually gets fit into the last uh, five videos, alrighty, see you then, bye.